looks good. See him. He's up on the ridge about your about your 430, 4 o'clock, 60 yards, coming down the hill. It's the end of October. It's our first sit here in Wisconsin. This morning I had a buck buck fawn come in. And we had another two and a half, three year old deer that kind of skirted us about 60 yards. I tried rattling him in, he wouldn't come. So we're gonna try again, see if we can get another deer coming in. But kind of quiet the last 15 minutes. I've personally watched young bucks sparring in the field and that's what's going to pique the curiosity of a mature buck. What you do need to understand is that these bucks don't just have a consistent pattern. You have to clickety clack back and forth, you have to pause here and there, you have to sound like they crash into each other and that's what's going to make it sound realistic. I try and do my rattling sequences for up to a minute long and then make it as hard crash together like they basically gave up the fight and break apart the antlers quickly. This works well for me. That's my sequence. <laughs> Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter. Several years ago, I got in an accident with my truck and I injured my left shoulder. After going through a bunch of physio, I still have troubles drawing back my compound bow. So I've been leaning heavily on my Excalibur crossbow. This one here is called an Assassin Takedown and works extremely well while traveling because it's compact, lightweight, and it works really well. Especially out of the bag, when we're traveling, we always do our best to ensure that we're shooting it several times to make sure it's bang on. The crank in the handle makes it super simple to get everything in place for shooting quickly. It's imperative while you're traveling to make sure you take several shots prior to entering the field. It's something that Tyrell and I have always done. Just get underneath the tail there. We don't want to miss any spots, Mike. Well, that's the important part. Get the hams all cleaned up. Look at them scrub. Yeah. <laughs> they always said I had soft hands. After getting in the stand and realizing that my decoy was too far to the right, I decided to get down and move it before it got too late in the afternoon. I restaked it and then put some deer urine on the back of his tail to encourage a buck to come behind him. Tyrell was sitting directly across from me so he knew exactly what I was doing to get set up. Homegrown Hunter TV is brought to you by Rackstacker, Canada's leader in big game attractants, Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. 
Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota Dealer, Bishop Lake Outdoors, First Place Trailers, Kent Cartridge Canada, Nature of Design Signs and Graphics, Woodland Mills, and these other fine sponsors. This young buck had stepped out to the north of me. The wind was absolutely perfect, and because the does had drawn south, going towards Tyrell and myself, we also had eight doe tags in our pocket that we wanted to fill. Not that I would shoot this little buck, but he did us a favor by pushing him our way. As you can see, I had lots of shot opportunities at the does that were coming out. Unfortunately, with so many eyes around, every time I drew my bow back, the entire field would clear. But they did keep coming back. I tried everything that I could to get this buck to come in. He was certainly curious every time I called, bleated or grunted, he lifted his head and looked. But he certainly wasn't irritated. So I had to wait it out and hope that he crossed me, but it was getting too dark to shoot. Closed captioning brought to you by Woodland Mill, a Canadian premier forestry products company. Welcome back to the homegrown hunter. You see, you look, uh, it's maybe like you're 11 o'clock. Black tree. Yeah. Oh, I see him now. I, yeah, I just see his tail. This week's tech tip is brought to you by Banks Outdoors, distributed in Canada by Rackstacker. 
There hasn't been too many times over the last 15 years of hunting all over North America that I haven't had a good set of binos strapped to my chest. Now my team and I choose to use Vortex Optics for two different reasons. One, it's got a great selection of binoculars from entry level binos right up to the Razor. I've personally got a Vortex that I've had for almost 15 years now and it's got an incredible warranty on it. They got a VIP warranty. The warranty covers you as a consumer for any damages or if it, any, it gets broke or any damages on the outside of the eye lens, you can get it fixed or repaired at absolutely no extra cost. That's the best thing that I like about them. But you can also check out why it's important to have binoculars by watching this footage. I was able to spot over 60 yards away, one little twig making a movement. Of course, you would think that'd be a squirrel, but after watching it for 20 seconds, I realized it was a buck rubbing. I was able to grunt that buck right into range. Check it out. White-tailed deer have a cunning ability to hide within the trees. Most of the time you don't even spot them, but when you spot a horizontal line in the bush like this, you can almost be guaranteed it's a white-tailed deer. Just like this young buck being chased off by the other buck I had spotted earlier, that's why it's so important to get yourself a good set of binoculars. Vortex Crossfires 10x42, highly recommend them. I challenge you to look very close and see if you can spot this buck. Can you see him yet? How about now? Get yourself a pair of Vortex Optics. I had done a rattling sequence five minutes before this deer showed up. As I scanned the area, I found that he was coming over the hill looking for the sound. I try and do a rattling sequence every 10 to 15 minutes, just in case a buck cruises by. Pay attention to his posture and how he's looking for where that sound came from.
Welcome back to the Homegrown Hunter. Spotted some moving up on that ridge, right where he came from. He was about 50 yards out. There's only like 15 minutes of shooting light left. I am freezing cold. The wind's been hitting me all day from the northwest. That wind was absolutely perfect. He was coming down the ridge and it looked like he was about 10 yards from catching my wind. Just like that little buck did about half an hour ago. Almost an hour ago. The assassin takedown. Drilled that G5 right through his shoulder. And I paused it. I see him fall right there. Oh, Jesus. I'm cold. That's not, not well, a little bit of buck feeding, but that, I'm cold. Temperatures dropped like 15 degrees today in the last five or six hours. Awesome. That's a beautiful Wisconsin buck right there. Wow. And now, this week's Cut to the Chase segment brought to you by Rackstack. I'm gonna do what I always do. Anytime I shoot a deer, doesn't matter what it is, I always, always, always give it an hour. Even if you feel the greatest confidence, if you try to push that deer too quick and you jump him, he could run for a long ways, especially if they got a lot of fat on him. He'll plug that hole, especially with archery equipment too, because it's a clean shot. Just let him lay down, go home, tell your buddies, Get excited about it, gather the family. Give them an hour, minimum of an hour, before you go out. Awesome buck. Stay tuned, we'll track that deer soon. The Tacticam Reveal is the official trail camera of the Rackstacker Elite staff and the Homegrown Hunter TV, because they're reliable. If you want to get into accessories, you can check out rackstacker.ca and get them right across Canada. I'm telling you, man, I love those broadheads. First time I ever used a G5, I uh, shot an elk in 2007. That is the broadhead situation. Oh, he went straight up that way. There you go. But he went right back where he came from. He broke off. He can do a loop. Yeah, right here. There you go. Yep, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. You have blood there, Steve? Nope. There's blood here. Right here. Blood here. Blood here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Shot up right here. There he is, man. Right here. Right here. Oh. Oh. Super cool character. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. This is gonna be a good night. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> I'm happy. We would fill you in on the bet that we have, but I don't think we can at this point. 
We can let them know once we put a tape on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cut, cut, cut. Well, it's been four years since we were down in Wisconsin. Tyrell and I have had an absolute fantastic time hanging out with Kathy and their family with Mike and seeing their kids. It's been a long time since we've come down here because of the COVID restrictions. But as you can tell, you know, just an added icing to the cake, if you will, that uh, we were able to harvest a really good buck. Whose idea was to do that? Mine. <laughs> And I grunted at that two-year-old, and he kind of looked at it, and he started turning sideways. I was like, oh, this will be fun to watch. All of a sudden, I looked up, and he's standing there. <laughs> that's the deal where I just... That, yeah, the pork nice rib. Yeah. 36 yards, he's in that corner. Awesome. And I, I hit him, I pulled a little bit. I hit him right here on the other side, both the shoulder. For past episodes, be sure to check out hghtv.ca. Until next time. Thank you.